All right, welcome back, everybody. Hope you had a great holiday break. And uh, we are here for Series E now, though. It's Rice Krispies Weeks here with uh, Jamerson and, of course, Tom T Squared. Towards the side, that bubble to the left has to be a little bit scary. But fortunately, Bird is the last person to throw his bubble down, which is going to be big. That's going to give them a lot of time. And there goes the bubble coming in, which means the other two teams are going to have to focus each other, Jamerson. This is beautiful. You can see how much the caustic just dissuades everyone from pushing up. You've been getting the knock on some fury as well. Here is Rice Krispies. Bird with that PK gets good damage off, takes out the enemy Gibraltar. Now it's team to come in for the third party now, though, as Team Rice Krispies on the verge of taking a second game in a row. Bird with that armor swap on to the red now, has the PK still in hand, pushes up, and Team. So um back when um pre season like uh before uh they nerfed caustic, my favorite force line when every time he threw gas or like shot gas and he would just like be like oh I think that's like my favorite for voice line because literally I can only see everything I can see everything and nobody else can. So I think that was my favorite one. So let's go ahead and take a look at the leaderboard to see who came out on top at its secret formula with a 10 point lead over Team Rice Krispies. And you know, they didn't have to get that old square, Taylor. And we're gonna close out this year in style. We got the pro night here for uh, the Rice Krispies week, and it should be an absolute banger as they do clear that drone. It's hard to tell currently where all the teams are. You gotta be careful for Jack Blood as uh, the R-Star was right behind him. He pushes forward now. Kramer hits a 99 now, charges forward. He's got that Mastiff out and beautiful play coming out from Protectful here. B3, never mind. It's actually uh, Bambino that pushed that charge. Yeah, and I see the chat kind of hating on my M&M preference. And I just got to say, man, that you guys don't know what you're talking about. Believe me, I've been in this game a long time. I've eaten a lot of snacks throughout my days. M&M Rice Krispie Treats are fire. If I could make any Rice Krispies Treat, it would definitely be just the original with a bunch of Skittles all over it because I love Skittles and I love Rice Krispies Treats. So I don't see how that could be bad up top but do have to reset here 88 with that massive shot but they bird playing expertly around this hi i'm gs bird i play for team rice crispy treats and you're watching series e dude i got a sweet tooth can i say you know it's been an explosive day six games a lot of winners so let's go ahead and take a look at the leaderboard to see who our top two are for this weekend clg will take the dub there a crucial win in the final game of the day to finally dethrone luminosity coming in in second place two points right behind them what a way for clg to close out the year and you know what three points come to mind cooler sending it through the portal like a bunch of psychos getting free kills to clg and to madness but what a great great performance from clg towards the tail end slowing down lg after their first hot start that we've seen from them in a while tons of tons of fun to watch yeah so clg lg our two winners of the evening. Congratulations to them. It's All right, at the end of every final circle, we have an interview with, with one of our top teams. It's Rice Krispies week, so we have Team Rice Krispies here. Guys, how you feeling? Good, yeah. good. Pretty good. Really strong day yesterday in the open day. Today, everybody was all over Sung's back trying to play Caustic. What's going on, Sung? Why is there so many Caustics everywhere? They just know. They, they know how to adapt, so... It is what it is. <laughs> it's true. Today, there was a lot of it, and it started with LG busting out 32 points. I think that it's just a, a really strong, underrated pick right now that people are realizing that if they can play it the correct way, then it's going to mm -hmm. be very strong. But let's talk about the difference in competition today than yesterday. Uh, Stunny, let's start with you. What, what do you notice? What's the difference between the pro days and the open days besides the fact that you weren't able to find your landing spot and skyhook and the loot that you guys typically want yeah besides uh landing spots um during tuesdays people tend to play more edge like hard edge so you can sometimes walk into mid zone for free which is what we managed to do game one and two yesterday uh but today like it's a little different people actually play mid zone they actually play pretty good spots they gatekeep so that's like the most 
noticeable difference. Uh, people play power positions on Wednesdays. Tuesdays, they don't really. A lot more team fighting, kind of not as much organized pushes, et cetera, et cetera. It seems like everybody on Wednesday on the pro day is really interested in getting into the middle of the zone. I want to talk about a play that you had that was great today when you guys were stuck over towards the bottom. You hit the phase, went up the zip line. Bird didn't even have a chance to heal, but he still went up and followed. Sung was there too, and you guys were able to win a fight over towards the top. Can you guys walk through that for me? Uh, yeah, when... When we when I made the call to play under there, uh, we were originally supposed to gatekeep a team and try to get three KP for free because they were walking in from the backside choke near near the backside of I think it's called launch site. Uh, but I ended up scrapping that idea and I told them to just leave them, just let them live because if we didn't do it, we were probably gonna eat too much zone damage and just like probably end up dying to gas. So I told them just just leave them, let them live. We need to get under this team like as soon as possible. We knew there was two important angles to cover, one being the ramp in front of us and two being the drop. So as long as we just kept those angles covered and we didn't bubble too early, we'd be fine. We ended up EMP EMPing and our like last ditch effort was to just go straight up the zip line. I hit the phase, got behind the caustic. We knocked the, the, the wraith for free. Uh, Bird was already down by then, so it was just up to me and Sung. So then after that, we just we got the crypto and I just had to chase down the caustic. I thought it was one of the strongest plays that we had today. It was a really great showcase of you going through and making you guys kind of being all on the same page there, even though, again, Bird wasn't able to fully heal. He still set it up there. Bird, uh, for you, on Gibraltar, what does it feel like when you guys are trying to find out where the next zone is going to be? Because you guys aren't playing a recon character, obviously. You guys aren't doing that crypto combination yeah. with the caustic. How do you guys kind of determine that? Do you look at zone one and kind of make a guess, or do you have to kind of wait till zone two and three to make your predictions on where it's going to go? Uh, like, usually, like, Stunny's usually pretty close. Like, if me and him have the same idea, we go with it, because, like, if me and, like, he's usually pretty close and I'm pretty close, so it's, like, if he says something and we have, like, the same idea, we just go with that and, like, basically, I feel, I just feel like a lot of people can't read zones, so it's, like, it's... The recon's good, but it's not. I don't think it's needed at all. Like, yeah, I, I don't think it's. You're fine. I, I, thought, I don't think it's necessary if you're gonna at least be, you know, taking it slow and doing the right plays. Yeah. But I definitely think that the crypto with the cost it kind of makes sense. So that's why I was that's, so mm -hmm. impressed to see when I when I go and I cast the EU games for the ALGS. Nobody has ever picked up that on an NA, and I think that now a lot of these NA players, we even saw reps switch on over to Caustic, which I don't think we've ever yeah. seen them do before. So we went from having one or two Caustics in the lobby to virtually half the teams running it, and then Crypto's coming through, and it really just changed the whole trajectory of how everything is. Now, Sung, I'm going to ask you a question that mm -hmm. you can feel free to answer as serious or non-serious as possible. Who's the easiest team to fight in Series E, and who's the hardest team to fight in Series E? Hardest team. Okay, let's go with hardest team. Um, seriously, I would say probably LG. I, they have the the counter for our comp. They have uh, crypto. They have caustic. If they uh, we bubble, it's EMP. They have caustic. They can counter uh, my team and make make them kind of you know uh, gassed out and they can't really do much. But that's the hardest team I would say. Then the easiest team I'll probably say pops aren't because they're troll. They're trolling most of the time. But. <laughs> We saw we saw Team Razor today look like they were busting out a troll composition, but it actually worked out for them. What did you guys think of seeing them rock the Horizon Pathfinder? I'm sure you guys didn't get a chance to see as much as we did when we were casting over it, but did you guys notice that that was something that they were doing? And it actually kind of mm -hmm. worked out for them because a lot of teams weren't expect expecting the crazy aggression. Yeah, uh, I think Horizon is a good pick. Uh, not a lot of teams uh, are used to her and being, being able to see her capabilities or her abilities. And they're like, oh. What do you guys think that you're going to stick with, Bird? Do you think that you're going to stick on Gibraltar? Do you think you're going to stick on Caustic Song? Obviously, Stunny's going to be on the Wraith. But that's what you guys won the ALGS with. That's what you guys had some of the best performances that we've ever seen in the AG ALGS in terms of points. Do you guys feel like you, you're done kind of testing things out? Or do you feel like this is where you're going to be? Uh, I feel like. This is like the meta, like for now, at least for us. But like Olympus, I feel like a lot of things will change in Olympus. Like I'm going to really try to work a non-Wraith comp in Olympus because the cars and the bubbles are like a really good way to rotate. So I'm going to see how I can like put that in if I can. Think you guys would think potentially DB go with someone like Bloodhound? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, I feel like that could work out because you get that scan, even though you're saying it's not that important. If you do land at a place, say that you do pick a POI that has the free scan, you might as well use it if you can. You could also use the bubble scans if you really need to, but you're going to be able to have the Bloodhound scans through the caustic gas, which means that, Bird, you're going to basically be the only one that's kind of struggling to get vision throughout all of that. But if you're in the middle of the fight, you should be able to just say what's going on with your teammates. So I think that's going to be interesting. What do you guys think about Olympus in competitive? Stunny, we'll uh, start with you. Um, I like the map because it's definitely different from the other two. The other two uh, kind of forces close gun fights most of the time. You know, Kings Canyon definitely did that. There's a lot of choke points, a lot of buildings, a lot of close quarters. Um, World's Edge, it gave you a little bit of both, you know, sometimes up in the geyser chokes or, or something like that. But uh, the, the one thing about Olympus that I don't like is that it's definitely going to force the Gibby meta. Everybody has to run Gibby, and if you don't, you're probably going to die. But besides that, I like the, I like the, you know, the, new feel you get for it, the long range. What do you think, Bird? Would you say it's going to be World's Edge, Olympus, Kings Canyon? Is that your top three in order? Uh, I like Olympus more than I like Olympus more than World's Edge, <clears throat> and then I hate Kings Canyon. I think Olympus is better because not many people know how to play it yet. So it's like I feel I have a better feel. Like I know how I should be playing it, and most people don't, and especially as a team. Like we do really well on that map when it was on Olympus for a little bit. And then, like, yeah, I just feel like we're going to do it. Like, that map is pretty – no, people don't know how to play it. Like, everyone's so used to playing World's Edge. Like, they know how to get around. They know the zones. They know all this other stuff. Olympus will, like – people got to relearn things. And I feel like I learned mm -hmm. a little bit faster than them. Yeah, we saw a lot of the teams today, for example. I think our top four teams have been rosters that have stuck well for quite some time. You guys are up there with another roster that you could almost start to consider a veteran roster after being together for, for a while now. So, Song, what about you? What's your what's your top three maps in order? Would you say it's the same as Birds? or? Mm, I, some, for some reason, I feel like Casey is like number one because the pop-off game we had. I feel like Whoa, that should be okay. on number one because you know that's the that's the map that we came back on. The, that's the strongest map that we ever came back on. Uh, I think was okay. just, uh, what was that? Just second, then third is probably Olympus because we had, we barely even played it. All right. Well, it's good that you guys all have three different opinions throughout all that. I thought that was pretty funny. But uh, hey, it's the it's the end of the year now. Do you guys want to give a shout out to anybody uh, that helped you get through the year? The teammates, the boys, we did a lot this year. Definitely, I want to shout out my my girlfriend. She spends like ninety percent of her time watching my stream. So, her, uh, my parents, and yeah, my teammates and friends for sure. Amosis, my thumbs, I guess, <laughs> my family. That's Amos. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys well i hope you have a great new year congratulations on a successful 2020 best of luck in 2021 that's it for final circle it's our last show of the year but we are not done we'll see you next week tuesday wednesday and thursday 5 p.m pacific time twitch.tv esports arena we'll see you then